Hello everyone. So uh, you'll have to excuse me today. I kind of have a cold, and um, and also I uh, you'll have to excuse my sporadic uh, videos lately. As I mentioned once before, it's been getting kind of busy, and a lot of things have been happening. And so sometimes I can post, sometimes I can't. And uh, so anyway, it's this kind of, and that's sort of what I wanted to talk about basically. And I wanted to talk about uh, my. Uh, remote lifestyle and the change that's been happening and you know just an update on all that I think inevitably this is going to end up being a video on the remote lifestyle the digital nomad lifestyle the you know the lifestyle of living remotely and uh and kind of the pros and cons and what's needed and stuff like that uh so as most of you know I've been living a remote lifestyle for years now and you know it's allowed me and I've mentioned this many times it's allowed me to live in a bunch of places both me and my wife We've been able to uh, live in places from, you know, Lucca in Tuscany, Lugano in Switzerland, Tacoma Park, which is right outside D.C. in the U.S., Atlanta, Taiwan, Shanghai, you know, stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, in, in that sense, it's been awesome. And look, the remote lifestyle is awesome. I, uh, uh, you know, it's only thanks to that that I was even able to, well, to live in those places, even to, you know, be with my wife. Like, I... So my wife and I have known each other since high school. I was actually friends with her older brother and sister. And, um, but, you know, the fact that I was able to go to Taiwan, I orig originally came to Taiwan just to study Chinese for a bit, but obviously we got back in touch. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I worked an office job and weren't able to leave for, you know, any substantial amount of time. And um, anyway, it, also the remote lifestyle is what allowed us to... I mean, you know, to move to different places, to move to Charlotte's because that's when we decided to settle down a bit more. And, uh, you know, but in the end, it was just my wife. She had to look for a job. She found one in Charlotte and, uh, you know, we visited, we liked it. And so we moved there because I'm, you know, I'm flexible. And so when we decided where to move, I was able to go wherever we want. And then she was able to see where the job opportunities were and go there. Likewise, when, uh, you know, she got pregnant and we decided to have the kid here in Taiwan, um, uh, you know, I was able to do that. She had to take a leave of absence from her work, you know, which turned out to be fine. And, uh, but yeah, it's, um, the remote lifestyle has tons of advantages. Absolutely. It's great. Um, but I should explain a couple things about it. First of all, it's not glamorous. And unfortunately, you see nowadays with Instagram and all this stuff, you see all these stupid pictures of people hanging out on the beach or on the, all these Photoshop things with a beautiful sunset and the view when they're drinking wine in some location and blah, 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 digital nomad lifestyle or, you know, the airplane emojis and the thing. I mean, whatever. They, uh, you know, that's not what the lifestyle is like. It's true. You can live anywhere you want, but it's not like that. Like, you know, who, who's going to sit in a hammock on a beach and work in a, on their laptop, right? You get too much glare. You can't get anything. All the sand will get in your laptop. You obviously, you're going to get your laptop stolen if you try swimming. So you can't do that either. I mean, it, it's, no one would do that. What you can do is, you know, go somewhere and work from the hotel and then later go to the beach or something like that. Uh, but anyway, it's, so you need to take these things into account. Don't get too... You know, you want to take the picture for Instagram, fine, take it. But that's got nothing to do with the lifestyle itself. The lifestyle itself is different. It's great, and there are lots of opportunities, but it's different from that. And so I wanted to cover a bit of this and, uh, and you know, tell you what, what to expect and what's needed, and then also why we've kind of been trying to slow it down, uh, this whole remote lifestyle, and, uh, you know, and what, what's going on now. So, uh, you know, like I said, there are a lot of opportunities, but there's certain things you need to keep in mind when you have this remote lifestyle. Uh, first of all, like I said, it's not glamorous, you know, uh, second of all, it's also, you're always on call, you know, a normal job is a, you know, normal office job is nine to five, Monday to Friday, and then you get the weekend off. Uh, this type of thing, you're pretty much always on call, uh, no matter what the day, no matter what time of day. And you'll find this out pretty quickly. And so what I would try to do, a di you know, different sporadically here and there is try to take time off here and there. Uh, it can be done or, or not. It really depends where you are. And especially when you're first starting out, it's almost impossible because you kind of need to grab whatever opportunities come your way. So, uh, you know, along those lines, there's, uh, Seth Godin was talking about how Seth Godin, by the way, is probably the best marketer in the world. He was talking about how he was in a, uh, in Vegas, I think. And it was in the evening and he was having a drink and he was on his laptop working and he overheard this couple walking in and she and uh, the, the wife of the couple, you know, the couple was 
just said to her husband, said, oh my God, can you imagine having to work, you know, at 10 p.m. Uh, on on a weekend or something? Like, oh my God, I'm glad I, you know, I don't have, or how much of a corporate slave do you have to be to do that or something like that? And, you know, it got him thinking, Seth Godin, because he's like, you know, well, what seems odd to me is that you dedicate not, you know, Monday to Friday, like 80% of your life to a job you hate just to take two days off to live your life, you know, the way you want it. He's like, what kind of a life is that? And I think that's where the difference is. You have to really love what you do. And if you love what you do, you don't mind. In fact, you like the idea of, you know, I, I love the idea when I can get work done, have a beer here, you know, uh, maybe something to munch on and get my work done and kind of get pumped up about it and all that. That to me is cool. And I feel really productive, like I've done something cool. And, um, but you really have to like what you do. And I think to be a digital nomad, to live remotely, work remotely, you really need that. You need to wake up in the morning and want to do this. Um, because, you know, you, you spend so much time doing it. It, it's, it has to be. And I've said in a previous video, when you, especially when you start out, you're not going to get many rewards for what you do. And, uh, you know, it'll take some time to start getting that. So you really need to like what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to get so frustrated and you're going to get burned out and, you know, you won't want to do it anymore. And um, so, yeah, you really need to love what you're doing. You need to like the idea that you can sit there, you know, with a beer and get work done. You need that you can sit there, you know, January 1st while everyone's getting over their hangover. You, you know, you're getting work done and being productive or I don't know, stuff like that. And uh, this idea, it, it needs to work for you. So it needs to be something you love. If you find yourself dreading having to get work done and you're working for yourself, you don't have a boss breathing down your neck making you work it's not going to work out. You know, you need to find something else like, uh, and, and figure out what it is or work in an office, you know, where you can have someone telling you to do that because it needs to be something you, you really like doing now. And a lot of, by the way, this is a whole other conversation. Cause a lot of people say, I can't find what my passion is. I can't find what I love to do. And, uh, that's a whole other video, which I can or cannot talk about if you want, but, um, you know, that's a whole thing unto itself. And, uh, you know, and, and, and in many ways, it can be fun to figure that part out and, you know, what it is that you love and you love doing um, and uh, and try to figure that out in life. But anyway, it needs to be something where you where you wake up in the morning, you want to do this. And um, and yeah, because otherwise it can't work out. Uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, what point does that bring me? Sorry, I have all these uh, things. Uh, yeah. But having said that. I feel this is actually, if you can do something like this and you can kind of make it work for yourself, it's actually a lot more secure and safer, safer than, uh, than a nine to five job, a uh, nine to five job. Look, a nine to five office job to me is kind of, especially in this day and age is one of the riskier choices because what you're doing is you are giving all your time and effort and energy to a company that's not yours. So first of all, you're fulfilling someone else's goal and dream and all that, which fine. Okay. You know, maybe if you don't want that, but it's, uh, you know, if you mess up, you're going to get fired rightly. So I guess if your boss messes up, you'll probably get fired before your boss does anyway. And, uh, you know, or, you know, cause your department will be let go or made redundant or something. By the way, if no, none of you mess up, but the company downsizes, you're probably going to lose your job. The economy goes down. So the company has to do layoffs. You're going to lose your job. There's so many ways you can lose your job that aren't your fault that to me, it seems kind of crazy. And, um, you know, and then you're back in the unemployment line waiting for someone else to give you a job again. You're not in control. Someone else is always control of your working life of what you do. And so it's, um, I don't know to, to me, to me, that kind of doesn't make sense, rationally speaking, logically speaking. I mean, it makes sense. Everyone has to do it, but it doesn't make sense to say that's safer. A hundred years ago, it could have been because you work for a company and then that's pretty much your, your job for life and that's how it is fine. But in this day and age, that's not the case at all. And you don't want it to be the case. You don't want to work for the same company forever. Most people I know would, you know, like to work for something else, something else. And, um, you know, and look, there are variations of this. Like you can work for a company, have company shares or be part of a team. And, you know, you're kind of, you get to, uh, see your vision become a reality within a company, stuff like that. Like I, I understand and I get that they're all different variations of this, but to me, if you are able to do your own thing and be in control of what you do, then that to me is a lot safer because if, even if nothing's working out, I can kind of realize that and then start doing something else, you know, and try to make that work out. And, uh, it's, 
So it's, I don't know, to me, it makes sense. If I can do something that earns me money, then I can kind of figure out and dictate what sector I go to, what clients I deal with and stuff like that to make it work out rather than having to rely on some boss who might not have the, my same interests at heart because he has his own interests at heart. Anyway, um, so uh, that's why I think it requires this different type of mentality. But likewise, it also requires, uh, well, a, a lot of other things. Um, first of all, you're always looking for opportunities. And uh, I think this is very important when you work remotely as any type of entrepreneur, but definitely remote lifestyle and stuff like that. You're always looking for opportunities. So if you're, say, a freelance translator and someone says, hey, you know, you do, I don't know, Bulgarian translations, English to Bulgarian, and you're in Sofia in, in Bulgaria and uh, and someone says, hey, uh, so do you think you could give me a list of, I don't know, you know, 10 different uh, fitness or athletic stores in Sofia? You know, you could say, uh, actually, I'm a translator. That's not what I do. Sorry. Or you could say like, yeah, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And you kind of need that mentality. You know, if you work for a company, for a boss, and your boss say, hey, I need you to do this and that and make us coffee, you're like, no, that's not in my job description, I don't do that, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine, for a nine to five job, that's, you know, that's, you have a certain job description and that's what you're supposed to do. But when you work for yourself, you're always looking out for opportunities. So someone, you know, maybe someone can find Bulgarian translators there, wherever they are in London, say, or something, but they need someone on the ground in Bulgaria to look up different things. And they just contact you out of the blue, ask you if you can look up these athletic stores or whatever it is. And you kind of learn to sort of try to seize opportunities and see what happens. And you know, because you never know where they're going to lead. And, um, and I think this also really helps a lot when you have this kind of job, you kind of trying to spot things that happen, certain opportunities and be able to grasp them on the fly as, as they occur. And uh, so I think this is quite important as well. And you need to, and this is something that you get, you get a lot more of and you get better at with time. Unfortunately, we don't learn this at all in school and at the workplace either. You know, you learn you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to study this subject. You're supposed to work on your job description. That's it. But when you work on your own, it's very different. And so you can get the hang of it more and more over time. But I think it's important to have um, it's also important to, uh, another big thing you have that you're, you're going to have to deal with is imposter syndrome. And this, this is actually a lot bigger than you think. I probably should have started off with it cause I see I'm already going past 12 minutes here, but imposter syndrome is very big. Um, because you feel like, you know, you don't have a degree in this. No one else told you that you're very good in it. No one else gave you the go ahead to do this, but you're still doing this for clients. So you're like, wait, am I a good enough translator? Am I a good enough graphic designer? Who says that I'm a web researcher? I just decided I am. You know, how do I know that I'm a great photographer and that I can do this? And what if, you know, I do legal translations and someone needs a financial translation? Like, oh, no, 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 I, I can't do that. I can't, you know, I'm not the right person for that and all that. And you really need to get rid of that. And you need to, and I, I still have this and I still need to work on it. You need to know that you are better than you think you are, if that makes any sense. And you need to, uh, you know, so if someone asks you, hey, could you, you know, research some, uh, some, what was it, athletic stores in Bulgaria? And you're like, well, I don't know how research goes. I don't know web research, market research. I don't know. I shouldn't accept that. You need to tell yourself, like, look, I can do this. And, you know, so obviously you can say, okay, what exactly do you need? I can let you know this, 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 and this. Would that work? And, you know, if they say, yeah, that's exactly what we need, boom you know, do it. Why not do it? You need to try to seize these opportunities as they come and not feel, get what they, what they call imposter syndrome, you know, and, and that's where you feel like, oh no, I'm not qualified to do that. I can't do that because this makes you not want to start things, not want to do things and want to wait until the perfect time to do it. And that's when you procrastinate and don't get stuff done. And that is kind of the worst thing to have. And just because I see it so often, people think they're not ready to do something yet and that they need you know, this much more training or this much more whatever, because they feel like they're, they're not at that level yet. That's imposter syndrome where you feel like, oh, these people are calling me a professional uh, translator, but I'm not one yet. I really need to work on it. You know, no, if, if you can handle what they give you to do, then you can do it. Okay. I'm not saying everyone out there is a professional translator, you know, cause some people are definitely crap. I've had to deal with a lot of people who are crap, but being nervous about it is not what's going to help you, you know, going out there and doing it, that's going to show you what you're good at. And so you have to go out there and do it. You have to take the risk. 
And, uh, you know, and th that's what it takes at the end of the day, because I don't care how much training you get. I don't care how many degrees you get. I don't care, you know, how many books you read and how many online courses you take or anything like that. If you don't do something about it, then no one's going to do it for you. You have to do it yourself. So you need to get rid of that imposter syndrome. Obviously, try to be prepared for stuff and all that. But don't let being prepared delay starting out. Don't let being prepared delay, you know, what any day you delay what you're doing is a day later that you're going to achieve your dream, if that makes any sense. So don't delay, you know, get it started. You're going to make mistakes. That's going to happen. But you'll also be able to deal with them a lot better than you think as time goes on and you'll pick yourself up and keep going. And trust me, you know, it, you will. And so you have to stop being afraid and just do it. Um, okay, so but I'm, I'm going a bit over time. So anyway, these are some of the things you need for the remote lifestyle. The good points of the remote lifestyle is like I mentioned before, you can live pretty much wherever you want. And, uh, you know, but it's not like glamorous, like I said, but it is really cool in the sense that you can, you can make these happen. If you've always wanted to like, say, live in Japan, then what you should do now is you should research it, you know, because you're working on whatever freelance thing you have, but then look into Japan. Don't be like, oh, when I have a million dollars or one day I'll go because then it'll never happen. What you need to do is be like, okay, what do I need to go to Japan? You need a plane ticket. You probably need to live somewhere. So go, they have a million online forums where people discuss all this stuff. See what rent is like in Tokyo, outside Tokyo, wherever you want to go. See what permits you need to live there or not. And, and then create like, you know, say, okay, so per month I'm going to have to be making this much. And I can almost guarantee it'll be a lot less than you thought it was. This will, this goal will be a lot more reachable than you thought it would be. And, um, and plus it'll be so much fun to research it. And you know, that's pretty much how I was able to live in all these places because I get excited about something. I start spending too much time researching it again. We you know with a beer or something trying to look up, I go in Excel and try to see if I lived here, what the rent would be, lived there, what the rent would be and try to figure something out. And then I'm like, okay, well, what would my next step be? Well, my next step would be to, you know, I don't know, see how much I'm earning. I say, okay, I need to earn a little bit more per month. And uh, so I kind of work on that and then I try to figure it out. Or maybe I'm already earning enough, so I just need to save enough for the plane ticket to go. So I just do that. I'll be like, okay, maybe in two months I'll have enough for the plane ticket. And then I try going. And so try making plans, you know. And in fact, I would, for Taiwan, I did that in other places. I just start making plans. I'd be like, at some point, I might come across a barrier that says, you know, that makes me stop being able to go there. But, uh, you know, until that point comes, I'm going to start making plans and see what happens. So um, anyway, I won't get into that because that's a whole other thing. In fact, I have a whole course on how to move and live abroad. And uh, but I just wanted to touch on it a bit in terms of living remotely, working remotely. By the way, doing this work, you maybe don't even want to live remotely. You want to just spend more time with your family or, you know, just be able to dictate your own schedule. And that's kind of what my wife and I are trying to do now. We're trying to not live remotely as much. We're not doing a very good job because we, we've been still coming here to Taiwan and, and going other places. But, you know, try to create roots in a community and kind of uh, be, be there for a longer time. And so that's what we're trying to do. When we go back to Charlotte, that's what we will continue to be doing. And, um, you know, but still having this type of lifestyle and being able to work online and kind of dictate my own terms. And uh, so, yeah, it doesn't have to be about the travel digital nomad stuff. It can be about whatever it is. But as long as you can, you know, dictate your own terms when you work, work with the clients you want, the hours you want, stuff like that. Um, so anyway, I know this is a bit all over the place, but I kind of wanted to give an update on my lifestyle and the fact that, yeah, we've been living this remote lifestyle and we're trying to now we're trying to settle down a bit more uh, also because we have a kid and so we kind of want to, you know, create more roots in the community as they say and, uh, you know, create more of that sense because you don't have that when you travel a lot. And when you live for three months here, six months there, it isn't enough. It's enough time to make friends and then you're in touch through Facebook and all that. But it's not enough time to kind of create roots and create a sense of community where you are. So we're trying to do that a bit more. We'll see how it goes. You know, as I said, we, we were doing that in Charlotte and now we came back to Taiwan to have to have our kid but uh we're gonna go back to Charlotte and continue that uh soon and uh yeah so we'll see how it goes so anyway that's an update on what's going on with me and uh in doing so yeah talking a bit more about the remote lifestyle which hopefully is something that you're interested in or touches upon what you're interested in because you know being a freelancer is a great way to achieve that and so you know they go hand in hand so anyway 
that's pretty much it. And I apologize again. Uh, I, you know, these videos are going to come up when they come up. I've been trying to keep the schedule. And in fact, you noticed probably, you know, a video or two ago, I, um, you know, had 10 minutes to record a video and I got a phone call in the middle and I got all frustrated and I usually don't edit these videos. I just put them up as is. So, um, uh, but that one, I have that phone call and I'm getting all frustrated in the middle. So I, uh, I, in fact, I think I took it down. I might just cut, I might edit that, you know, part in the middle and just upload it because, uh, that that's also kind of a waste just in the middle, but also, you know, trying to keep the schedule just is, is a bit too much. Um, you know, this isn't my job. My job is what I do, but now with all the other stuff going on, there's just way too much going on. So, um, you know, but I'll do these videos as I can. Um, and, uh, because I do enjoy doing them. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Hopefully you found this useful, you found this or interesting or something along those lines. If you do want to hear more, I don't know, about aspects of a remote lifestyle, how to do it, why to do it, where to do it, you know, or stuff like that, or the good points, the bad points, stuff like that, uh, you know, feel free to let me know and I can talk about it a bit more. And uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.